On October 6th, 2001, the last federal search and rescue team left Ground Zero. The following day, three miles north of this site, another sporting milestone would take place. That was the Rangers home opener at Madison Square Garden. Members of the police department and fire department hockey teams were invited to join Captain Mark Messier on the ice for a ceremony before the puck was dropped. They were given strict instructions on where to stand and what to do. But one New York firefighter had other ideas and that led to an unforgettable moment. This is what makes you a fireman, your helmet. This is it. What do people recognize? They recognize the helmet. You know, that's the staple of a fireman. If the helmet could talk, it would tell you all the different hallways that we crawled down and all the crazy nights of getting burnt on your hands and your knees and coming home with, you know, your ears burnt. But I'll tell you a lot of good stories too. for all of us exactly what sports can do. That was an instance where New York really showed what it was made of. Hello, my name is Ray Downey Sr. I'm a battalion chief with the fire department of the city of New York. I've also worked with FEMA for the past five years assisting in the development and planning of strategy and tactics for collapse rescue operations. Ray Downey was a deputy chief who was the chief of special operations. Ray Downey was the first captain of the hockey team, the fire department hockey team. Ray Downey was, he was the man. Chief Downey was at a big fire or an emergency situation. He had such an aura about him that you felt like everything would be okay. When we speak the same language, we communicate better and understand each other faster. He loved hockey. He was tenacious. He loved to mix it up. He loved the game. At times, he had two hockey games on at one time at home. And, and, right, two different TVs going on. Yeah, he was all in with hockey. I used to tell him, before we had the kids, hockey was number one, the fire department was number two, and I was three. Hockey, for a lot of us, was that release of, you know what, you don't have the stress of the job. You didn't have to be chief now. You can just be Ray Downey, the hockey player. He was special. He was a consummate leader. He was going to be there with his men, which is obvious from 9-11. You know, he could have been at the command post running the operation, which is his expertise. But instead, he's inside the building, unfortunately. Being down there at that particular time really hit home about how tragic the events were when you actually were down there to see the devastation. Days after that, then it became very apparent to us that everybody had a big responsibility to try to, um, you know, alleviate anything that we could from the families in any way we could. I was working that day, and we had been invited down for the home opener. Billy Cameron, who was the general manager, told us, yeah, all you need to bring is, you know, bring a stick, bring a jersey, bring gloves, and your skates. I had a picture of Ray Downey in the firehouse. Uh, so basically, I made a copy, and I'm thinking, I'm bringing my helmet. They didn't say anything about bringing our helmets. That's the signature of a firefighter. 
and I'm gonna put his picture on there and it'll be great. Be a nice for him and the family and people will see. I just remember one of the biggest decisions that we all had is what was the right protocol to follow, or what was the right thing to do, not to uh, offend anybody, um, how we could help but not offend. Tensions were high, security was high. They wanted us to listen because firemen don't listen so good sometimes, you know, especially hockey firemen. So I basically snuck my helmet down. <laughs> As we went on the ice, I put the helmet on. started to come out and as the rangers were coming everybody had a helmet on but you could see mark in the distance and he didn't have a helmet on the captain turned to my co-captain Joe Byrne and said, I think I'm going to skate over and ask Messier if he'll wear the helmet. Joe said to me, are you crazy? I don't think that's a good idea. I said, well, if I don't go now, I got to either go now. I can't wait for Buffalo to come out. I said, I'm going. The crowd started to get louder as I got closer to Mark. On the way over, I was thinking, well, I skated all the way over here, so I'm going to get in trouble. I might as well talk to Mark for a few minutes, because I may never get this chance again. I went right into saying, the picture on my helmet is of Chief Ray Downey. Uh, he's the first captain of the hockey team, and you would honor us his family if you could wear the helmet as long as possible and I'm sure you have stuff to do. And I of course said I would be honored. By the time there's so many things going on I didn't realize the significance of that moment until much after it. You know, you're just trying to make sure you do the right thing. I was like shocked. I said, oh my God. And I told my kids, Daddy would be so honored. It was so fitting that a great leader like Marc Messier, a true leader, captain, was wearing Dad's picture on his helmet. Just on behalf of uh, the players and the entire Ranger organization, We'd like to express our uh, deepest sympathies to the family and friends that were lost. We'd like to dedicate this season to all of you and all the heroes. Thank you. I look back at that night with a lot of pride. Not just the way the Rangers responded to that situation, but the way that everybody here in the city responded to it. And I think, to me, that moment really kind of exemplifies that. I think it helped in giving people the realization that it's okay to start living again. Let's help this horrible situation make us all stronger. Maybe it makes you more caring. Let's create a bond that'll make us better in New York and better all, all over the country. Hockey was very important to Chief Downey, who became a legendary figure in the city. And folks, we are honored tonight to have in the room his wife, Rosalie, and his son, Joe, who are here tonight to spend a few minutes with us and with Mark. Rosalie and Joe, will you come up, please?
What role has sports, your connection to the Rangers, to Mark, and to all of this, played in your life as you've gone forward? Well, it continues to play now. It's uplifting. This exhibit, there's a lot of sadness in this building, and it, rightfully so. But this exhibit is very uplifting for everybody. It puts a smile on your face when you see that big picture of Mark and then the Mike Piazza home run, the, the World Series. So it's something that little things that help get you through the hard parts puts that smile on your face. I think it's important to my grandkids to see what's going on and what happened that day and never to forget it. And I think by bringing sports into it, it brought a little more happiness to people. Mark, as you look back on it now, what does it mean to you? Over the years, learning more about the Downey family and Chief Downey and, and what he was and how much he was respected in the FDNY and everything he did, not to mention he founded the, the, NY, <laughs> or the FDNY the hockey team, but and his passion for the Rangers, but uh, just the kind of guy he was and leader he was, uh, it, it makes it all that much more special that that night that one of the firemen uh, on a whim brought that helmet over there, you know, it, maybe it was all just meant to be. Still coming, a memorable halftime show at the Super Bowl.